I want to make this repair invisible. Um, one of the issues that I'm dealing with here is it's an eggshell type finish on the wall. Uh, paint is an eggshell sheen. So when you do a repair over a surface that's got a sheen to it, it's difficult to, to hide because um, here's an example. See, there's some repairs that I did last year did, did a nice repair, it's nice and smooth, but when I rub my hand against it, I can actually feel that this spot where I had the little bit of joint compound and stain it is much smoother than the other surfaces. Um, and plus, when I repainted it, it absorbed into this uh, very dry joint compound, so the porosity was different, the texture is different, and it's an obvious repair. So I'm gonna to try to come up with a solution to make this invisible. Okay, what I have is, uh, when I removed the bike rack from this wall, it actually loosened the paper face. It kind of stuck to the paint and, and it pulled it apart. So I'm just taking a uh, knife and I'm just going to cut that very gently. I'm not cutting all the way through, just deep enough to remove the damaged loose tape. I take a pretty coarse uh, sanding block. This is pretty, Pretty coarse, and you can see that just by sanding this, I'm making it, I'm removing some of the additional loose materials. All right, I've got all the areas prepped. Got these little screw holes pushed in. Remove loose materials from that area. This area is looking good. A little tape on it. I'm gonna use actually the fiber fuse tape just embed it in some uh, joint compound, get this repair looking good real quick. I know a lot of times when I'm talking about doing repairs or even taping drywall, I'm mentioning fiber fuse tape. This is a tape that I really like using. It's a fiberglass matte tape. And it's embedded in the same manner as paper tape. In other words, compound is put on the surface, then the tape, and then the tape is pushed into that compound. I'm gonna start out by putting a little joint compound on. I've got this, those holes I wanna fill, and some holes down here, and right here as well. And then I'm going to put some fiber fuse tape over it. I'm just gonna put a little piece right over that, right over those holes. I'm gonna go with a strip right along this, Damage area, and another piece right over those holes right there. <clears throat> then I'm just going to embed it, push really tight with my taping knife. Now I'm immediately going to just put a coat of junk compound right over the top of this. Keeping it thin, I'm not trying to, uh, I don't want to build the thickness up, but I do want to start feathering it in right away. There you go, I've got the uh, first coat over these repairs. Compound on, feathered out fairly thin. If I step back, you can see this is going to be a very visible part of this wall. So hiding the repairs after it's painted, even if I get it perfectly smooth, do a really nice job, I'm afraid of it shadowing through like it did in these other areas that I repaired uh, a year ago. Trying to hide those, trying to prevent that from happening is my goal here. I'm all right, the um, first coat that I put on yesterday is nice and dry now. What I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna sand it with a sanding sponge. It's a pretty coarse sponge, and I'm just gonna sand this to get it smooth and feather the edges in. And all I really am going to do is apply one more very thin coat of compound over these repairs, and it'll be good to go. So I'm just gonna sand it.
You can see that actually that already looks pretty darn good, but I have some imperfections. I have some little bubbles in the middle here, some unfeathered edges. So it is gonna need another coat. Right here, you can actually see where the tape is showing through a little bit, where I had those holes. Now, the beauty of the fiberfuse tape that I use is, watch, I can stand right down to it. I stand it right down to it, and it looks pretty darn good. I can see a little bit of fibers sticking out right here, but they brush right off. So now, if that was paper tape or even the fiberglass mesh that is self-adhesive, that would flash through and I'd have to build up the compound a little heavier um, than I'm going to now in order to hide it. That's one reason why I really like to use the fiber fuse for these very minor repairs. These repairs are quite small. I'm just using my six inch knife, a trowel and my six inch taping knife. I don't need a larger knife to smooth it out. <clears throat> You'll see what I mean. And I'm using the um, plus three joint compound, the lightweight that I have thinned down a little bit. It works a little better if it's been thinned down a little bit with water. So now I'm just going to apply the joint compound right over the patch. Because this is already looking pretty darn smooth, I really don't need to build the compound up much at all. I'm just applying the compound, and then I'm just gonna remove it, and then see how that looks. So the first thing I like to do is I like to get those edges nice and tight. See how tight I've got that into the painted surface? Now I'm just going to start pulling my knife across. I'm just pulling my knife across the repair. Getting it looking really good. Notice that as I pull my knife across, I've got it pretty darn flat. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not applying much pressure, if any. I'm just letting the knife just glide along that surface. And there you have it. There's my finished coat. You can see how nicely feathered it in and how smooth it is. But it is going to need a little bit of sanding. And this is one of my concerns um, with trying to hide this type of repair is See this edge, how um, it's, even when I get done sanding this, it's gonna be really feathered in nicely, but the surface where I've done my repair is definitely smoother than the painted surface. So that's the issue that I'm going to try to correct as I prime and paint this to help make this a visible repair. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start priming. This is USG Sheetrock uh, First Coat. I use it as my primer. If you read the back label here, it's uh, professional grade uses, minimizes drywall decorating problems caused by porosity in surface texture variations. That's, that's what I'm trying to solve. Because these are just uh, small repairs, I'm just using a small little roller. It's pretty coarse um, nap. I just pour some of the primer in a small pan. I'm just gonna roll the, roll the primer on over my patches and um, try to create a little bit of a texture to match the surrounding surfaces. <clears throat> Here you can see the areas that I've primed. You can see that I have created a little texture with a roller. Try to match the surrounding area. It's funny, at this angle, I can see that the um, areas where I did the actual patch where there's a lot of joint compound, it's already started to dry. So it's soaking in there really quick. 
compared to the other areas. And that's, you know, the differences in the porosity. And that's what made the repairs flash through when I only painted. Same thing will happen with the primer. Once I put the finish coat on, hopefully that's all gonna disappear. Okay, the paint I'm going to use is a eggshell paint. So that's the sheen of this paint. I'm not going to use a three quarter inch roller and the three sixteenths is definitely too fine of a nap. It will just um, leave kind of a spotty surface. I think the ideal roller for the eggshell would be a three eighths nap, but I don't have a three eighths. All I have here is a half inch. So I'm gonna try this with a half inch. And what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to paint the areas that I've already, that where I did the repair and I've already primed. I'm not going to paint the whole surface. I'm doing this just to see how it comes out. I wanna see how it's gonna look, um, just to prove that it is or isn't necessary to actually paint the whole surface. So I'm just going to paint the areas that I patched and primed. painting the entire wall, but I am enlarging it much larger than an actual repair and primed area. I'm trying to feather it in, blend it in really well. Okay, so this is a finished wall. This area where I have the repairs. So I think this method worked really well. The only, different, the only thing I might have done different is I think when I did the primer, I would have tried to use a roller that was a little coarser to create, to, you know, to try to match the texture that I originally had. But overall, I'd say looks really good. Here's an example of a ceiling that I'm working on. I had multiple repairs. I guess it was a plumbing leak and a crack and stuff. Anyways, now I'm going to paint this as soon as this um, gets sanded out. Um, you can see the ceiling is not perfect. It's, it's actually in pretty good shape, but there's a little bit of waviness to it. When the light shines across it, you can see some uh, shadowing on the ceiling because it's not perfectly flat, but it is painted with a flat paint. So these repairs are gonna be much easier to hide because I'm blending in flat paint. So tomorrow, I'm, after I sand this, I'm going to quickly prime it, wait for that to dry, then put a coat of flat paint over the ceiling, and it's going to look really good. Although I still may get some of the shadowing because of the um, flowing irregularities in the ceiling. You know, it just got a little sag here and there. Um, like right here, I can definitely see something it's actually a seam that's a little bit recessed, and all that still may shadow through, but because it's a flat paint, the ceiling's gonna end up looking really nice. Here we go, I got this ceiling all finished. I got a nice coat of flat paint on it. I think kind of the conclusion that I have when talking about painting over repairs is, I think the texture is the hardest thing to really hide because, you know, you're, where you paint, there's always a little bit of a texture from the roller, and where you repair, it's always very smooth. I think that's actually harder to deal with than the differences in porosity.